Live from the 17th floor of the Rockefeller Plaza in New York City. No, that's not at all where we're at. We're from the complaint department at YouTube. What we're going to do is we're going to read some of the angry comments because somehow, while we were trying to educate people, we've angered some of you. And I thought that it would be fun to see all the ways that we've been messing up. Without further ado, let's get into it. We got a lot of these. How is that no dig fence? This is on the no dig vinyl fence. How's that no dig fence? You had to set the pipe. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, busted. When we mean no dig, we mean like we dug two holes. One of them was for the center stop and one was due to utility conflicts. So, so smart ass, literally that's the name of the individual, says weld a few tabs onto the bottom of the pole. This is So this is on the foam versus dry pack. Weld a few tabs on the bottom of the pole and I'm sure you won't be pulling a pole out like that. I wonder what the rot resistance would be if the post, and this isn't really a mean comment, but I did have several people concerned with the fact that if you welded a bar or some rebar across the post, then it would offer more resistance pulling out. Really, I'm not that concerned because there's not gonna be any forces acting on the post like we were when we pulled it out with the excavator. So it's really not a concern. Okay, here we go, happy quails. Happy quails, they're at it again. He knows so little about what he's doing, he's not even using post setting concrete, which has stone in it, because he isn't putting the post in first, and his higher priority is cutting corners, corbers, to make his work easier. While well, he said in another video that he justified charging the same for the inferior job and its results. Plus, he doesn't want to do the harder work when the customer opts for it. The post set into the hole first, is resting its weight on gravel pounded base inside the bottom of the hole, not suspended, supported by a rod. Stop watching. I stopped watching here because these guys should have worked for someone else before taking this on themselves. I'm not exactly sure what Happy Quail's uh, credentials are, but he's wrong. The reason that we stab all of our posts into the concrete is, is we're getting concrete inside the post as well as outside the post. It's called stabbing, and it's what all the professionals do. So if you go to any military base or anything like that, chances are all of those posts have been stabbed into the concrete, and it is more professional to do that. And not only that, we don't need, uh, because there can't get any water into the post, it's sealed off. And then we float it in the concrete, so there's concrete underneath the post, there's concrete on the side of the post, and that's how we do it. That's how most of the people do it. The rookie way to do it is to set the post in the hole and then pour around it. That's for people that need to use strings and things of that nature. That's not what we do. That's not how we train our guys. And a lot of times what they're doing is they're slopping concrete all over the post, which is, again, not professional. The post setting concrete mix is usually 2,500 PSI when your regular satcrete is 3,000 to 3,500. So check that out. The red bag concrete, if that's what you're referring to, is a fast set mix. It has nothing to do with the PSI. So the post setting concrete is not any better. And in fact, it's actually inferior concrete to regular sack mix. So I don't know why he thinks we're cutting corners. And on this video, this is the fence foam versus dry pack. All we're trying to do is, is show different ways of doing the same thing. And he didn't even talk about the dry pack. He didn't take issue with the dry pack. He had more of a problem with the way we stabbed the post in the wet concrete. So go figure. We stopped watching that video, but then went and watched another one, so thank you. Really appreciate that. I mean, when I get two comments from the same guy on two different videos, that makes me really happy. Like, super happy. I don't even care if they're mean, because Google doesn't care, YouTube doesn't care. Ah, uh, no string line, uh, Gary on the no dig vinyl fence. No string line, really. We get a lot of hate comments because we don't use strings. However, I will give you that, Gary, on the no dig vinyl fence when you're using the donuts. I think a string line is actually better. So on the how to build a simple sturdy gate, people recommended overlapping the pickets and cutting both pickets at the same time and then just dog earing the outside so that they fit together like a glove. And that is actually a really good method I didn't know about until after we did that. So I, you will never hear me profess to know everything. I am always learning something. And when people come to us with new ideas, we are all ears. Uh, so I did learn that. A test in non-frozen ground would have been more helpful. I don't know how. If it'll hold up to frozen ground, then it can handle the frost. Ah, I need boots. <laughs> this is uh, Secrets to Digging Post Holes, and 
Well, if you think I need boots now, you're probably set to get a little angry. This has been sharp, sharp knack. Uh, my footwear is always the source of much contention on the interwebs. Let's first get to my shoes. They're not flip-flops, but hopefully, with any luck, they're offensive enough that I'll get some comments about how bad my choice of footwear was for this. Ah, here's one. You don't need to dig any deeper than 36 inches, exclamation point. I built fence for 30 or 25 years using two and a half inch and three inch OD oil filled pipe, schedule 40 and welding all my H's and T's. Never once did I have a post move and pulling all kinds of fence wires. You've just made your job more difficult by digging your holes to an unnecessary depth. So I've got other people claiming that we're cutting corners and this guy is saying, hey, you're doing way too much work. Why do we dig to 42 inches? And I think I talked about it. And that is because engineers specify we can't buy our posts in weird lengths. So if I order a nine foot post and the engineer says that my six foot tall fence needs to be set three feet in the ground, then actually I'm setting 39 inches into the ground. And we give ourselves a little bit of cushion because we use the stab method, which means we pull the, pour the hole full of concrete, stab the post in there. And what the last thing I want to do is find out that my hole's not deep enough because I need to float it up or down and run into the bottom of my hole and not be able to get my post to the right height and then have to come back and add more time cutting my post off. We're setting everything exactly to height all the time. So by digging the hole to 42 inches, I've got enough to get 39 inches of post in the ground plus another three inches of cushion. That's why we dig 42 inches. Now, in other cases, we actually have specifications that dictate how deep we have to pour our post holes. We're getting ready to do a project over at the airport in Cody, Wyoming, the county of Cody, Wyoming, and they actually specify that we've got to go 48 inches. You're not gonna argue that. You're gonna do exactly what the engineer specified because that's what you agreed to when you bid the project. Um, we don't get to argue with them, so 42 inches isn't even going to be deep enough on that. So you're doing stuff for farmers and ranchers, we're doing stuff for commercial work, and that's where the 42 inches comes in. It all depends on what, where you're coming from. You're probably fine if you're digging the 36 inches and everything's working fine, but if an engineer tells us that we're going to do that, that's what we're going to do, or they'll make us rip it out and do it over again. We're not going to take that chance. So if you haven't seen the video, one of the very first videos I did last summer was the one where we built some barbed wire fence and then ran a car into it. And we built some traditional braces and then we built a pipe brace and we did traditional low carbon wire versus high tensile wire. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. But I took a ton of heat because guess what I did? If people were mad about my shoes and some of these other videos, I had the audacity, the audacity to wear flip flops while I was putting up ag fence. And I even welded in my flip-flops. Let me tell you what, that will set the internet on fire. So this guy says, hard to take advice from a guy in shorts and slippers who throws his level around like that. <laughs> uh, apparently this guy's a little upset that I was wearing house slippers and shorts and a level. And the funny thing about that is, is that it was the cowboys. The cowboys, the farm and ranch people, because they're just tough and you can't you wear shorts and flip-flops and weld and do tough man stuff out in the West. What are you doing, Olson? On the fence foam versus dry fence foam video, he said, anyone who lets concrete mushroom above the ground ain't that bright. The frost will raise the post. My late father proved this to be true. And I absolutely, if you're doing that, if you ever watch us pour concrete and you watch some of the other videos where we talk about pouring concrete, we always leave the concrete down below. And that's because if you're digging a hole, the top always seems to break out and mushrooms up. So you end up with like a, a mushroom. If you pulled the concrete slug out, slug out and you filled it all the way to the top, it would be mushroom shaped. So the, and what happens is, is as the soil on the outside of that concrete freezes and expands, it will actually pry that concrete up out of the ground. And that's why in places like asphalt, you'll see that the concrete for the fence post is up. It's because it's being shoved out of the ground by the frost heat. And that's why we don't ever recommend bringing your concrete all the way to the top and doming it. Because if you dome it, you're using the worst part of the hole. Engineers request this and sometimes will insist on us do doing this. Never, ever, ever a good, uh, never, ever a good strategy in any kind of 
climate where freezing is a problem. Uh, the fence post, this is on the fence foam versus dry pack. It says a fence post that doesn't have a steel plate at the bottom of the post will start to get destroyed in a few years. If you don't plate it, I don't trust him. I don't know what that's about. I gotta be honest, I really don't. I don't. I've never seen anybody plate the bottom of a chain link fence post. But we seem to get a lot of advice from people that actually aren't in the fence business. Dale Carcelli says, vertical is plumb, horizontal is level, learn the difference. Sometimes I misspeak and we are using level, so I will just refer to it as level because I'm never ever building things actually level. We're more concerned with plumb, but please forgive us. Uh, this isn't a mean comment in it either, but it was very interesting. It's Lara Assist on the Our Secrets to Digging Fence Post, and he left a couple of different comments, which I found was interesting. Our Secrets to Digging and rocky ground he said the ruthless sturgeon immunofemnotically rub because the mustard potentially test but a secretive cotton's uh, symptomatic combative rice i don't know how we got to that sentence but i wonder if it was just suggested words on a phone next 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 until he got some sort of a sentence but i thought that was funny ah there's one of the good luck trying that in connecticut i don't know anything about connecticut i'm not telling people what to do in connecticut you're going to have to use the method that works best for you in your area. I don't presume to know the soil type in every neighborhood. What I can do in one part of our town, I cannot do in another part of our town. You're the professional. You'll have to figure that out. This is only a tool in the toolbox. This is on the, uh, the ghost control, the video of the lawyers made us remove. He says, you, my friend, have mastered sarcasm. <laughs> well, thank you. It's not a mean comment, but really appreciate that. Sarcasm is the language of my people. Sniper Patty, again on the foam, says foam won't take the cyclic stresses like animals or wind flexing on the fence, unless it is a very dense foam. Utility poles have larger surface area against the foam than fence poles, so they're not comparable. Dry pack is only as good as the wet pack if it is not disturbed whilst it abstracts water from the ground. That would require supports for a month. Wet pack is the only guaranteed rugged and reliable approach. While I don't disagree that wet concrete is probably the best. I think that we showed the cyclic stresses that can be applied horizontally or laterally on the foam are actually very, very tough. Uh, the only way to really test that is we could put it out here in Wyoming wind for a year and probably prove that wrong. From what I, I thought that it would break free of the foam a lot faster than it did, it just didn't. Uh, Mikey, Mike Masters says, the issue I have with the test, this is again the foam, the issue I have with the test is that they're not really appropriate to the use of the post. When do posts need to have any strength against pulling them out of the ground? When will a post in the ground be hit with a sledgehammer below the surface? When will, when the fence post is sitting in the ground, these things don't happen to the fence post. So how are these tests appropriate for the performance? what the post sitting in the ground needs to do its job. It goes on to say a far better test would have been over time, which method works best because that is what really matters, not these tests. So I don't disagree and I don't, we were simply seeing how easy it was, especially with the foam. We knew that the concrete was gonna pull out and we we're just trying to see how well it's grabbing on, um, which is why I had a lot of sarcasm regarding negative G's and I wish I could find the comment because somebody said there's no such thing as negative G's and I got beat up for that, for saying that. We're gonna need a lot of negative G's. Luckily, we have a negative G machine right here. That was sarcasm. It's the language of my people and if you're gonna watch the channel, you might wanna pick up on that. And I was, the point was is that we don't have any forces trying to pull things out of the ground. The closest thing we have to anything trying to pop anything out of the ground is frost. That's it. John Jacobs. In my experience, wet concrete needs to be above the ground at least four inches, then work to a slope away from the center or else the steel will rest over time and fail. I think that this, I don't think that's necessarily a hate comment, but there again, it's all relative to your area. In Wyoming, you can put bare pipe in the ground and it'll last forever. You can put half rusted pipe in the ground, it'll still last forever. There's nothing to corrode it. So in Wyoming, what happens if you do what he's talking and you dome the concrete, we'll get frost heat. In Texas, maybe this works. In the South where there's no frost. In Wyoming, if you do that, your post is gonna get shoved out of the ground. Really, we're teaching you the ways we do it. It's up to you to decide what's best for your area. It, what works in one area isn't necessarily the best way to do it in another area. I can only show you what we do in Wyoming because 
that's where we live. Uh, this is on the secrets to digging a fence post holes in rocky ground. Haha, <laughs> digging a hole. Secret ingredient, power auger drill. And not even that, the secret, the, I don't think that people appreciate just how hard it is to dig in that ground. You can go get a power auger drill on a three point tractor and all you're gonna do is shear pins. You can get a two man auger and you'll get nowhere. This type of ground that we're digging in is incredibly difficult. And even if you do have a skid steer and you don't use the secret weapon that we talked about and you don't you know some of the methods, you'll still not get that hole in the right spot and you'll still not get it to depth. Let me know when you figure out how to dig post holes in Texas clay. And I think maybe the problem is gumming. I don't, I don't really know. Digging holes in clay really isn't that big of a deal. Just use an auger. How to dig holes in rocky ground. Secrets, Winston Smith says, secrets for digging in rocky ground. Step one, buy a 40,000 Bobcat drilling rig. Well, thank you for thinking it only costs $40,000. They're a little bit more than that, but uh, they do work very well. You can rent them too if you don't want to buy one. You can go down to the rental store and they'll let you rent one for a day or two. Uh, Jeremy Wallace says the dry set will get harder with time, but that's true for all the concrete. All of it will continue to cure right up until it starts deteriorating. Concrete never stops curing. That's why the older the concrete, the harder it is. Sakia 630, if the fence is not going to be ripped out by an excavator, would it not be best to check shear loading on the poles? Sure, we could go run into them with a car. I mean, if that's what you're talking about, all the poles are going to fail. Uh, even on the foam, I would suspect that the post would probably bend. A 2 and 3 8 pipe post is probably going to bend um, well in advance of the foam actually letting loose of the post. But we can try that. I love to destroy stuff. We may have to try that. Let's just go set some posts and run. we'll run some stuff over. I'm good with that. Somebody says, use a string line. Gives you more accuracy. Here in Honduras, we can teach you how to do a perfect job. Give us a call. Uh, that's Mario Nunez. So uh, if you don't like the Wyoming way, you can go down to Honduras and learn how to build fence down there. Somebody was a little upset the fact that we used pink. Uh, says check your 811 this is first last check your state 811 call program to see what color to mark your holes with normally white is for intended excavation pink is survey marks yellow is gas pipeline red power lines orange is internet telephone green is sewer purple is slurry lines uh purple is sewer here and blue is water so that's that's the same for everywhere it's, it's nationally it doesn't matter where you go the colors are all the same however we infringe just a little bit on the survey people because typically uh, survey people are painting laths and i see a lot of survey people actually paint their laths orange and some of them will paint them lime green so survey people use a lot of different colors but generally speaking survey people don't bury lines that can kill me so i'm not so worried about using their color to see better visibility on the ground so that's why we use pink um, we don't want to use orange. I don't want to use any colors where it's for a buried utility, but survey people don't have buried utilities. So it's perfectly okay to use pink when you're marking your, ex uh, marking your holes to excavate. However, we do use white to tell the utility companies where to locate. Uh, how, we big no how we build no dig vinyl fence. Replacing a section of that fence must be a pain. How do, you, how do they hold up to 80 mile an hour winds? Replacing a section of that fence, if it falls down, is really not that hard. With this system, the nice thing is, is I can go back and I can pull some screws out, pull everything out, slide a new post on, and I don't have to dig a new hole, I don't have to mix new concrete, I don't have to wait for the concrete to cure. There's nothing like that. Uh, I got a lot of these comments. Hey fellas, don't you realize all posts being set into a footing require a crossbar or a large bolt at the base to lock it into the footing, concrete or foam. Otherwise, you're only relying on skin friction. That's why your post simply pulled out. The post did not simply pull out. They pulled out of the foam and that was after quite a bit of pressure was applied. You wanna go? <sighs> Can you pull it out? Pull it out. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't yeah, pull it out. It ain't. If I can't rotate it, I can't pull it out. We'll whack it. We'll whack it? Whack it. Hit it. Hit it with your purse. Really? There's always got to be that one kid. The concrete, we rarely ever get them to pull out. We would like it sometimes if they would pull out, but that's hardly ever the case. The concrete binds to the post and we don't have to worry about that. It's, and this, we've pulled out numerous jobs, like numerous, numerous. If you have good concrete, that skin friction you're talking about will hold that post and it will hold it in there so tight that we can lift 10,000 pound bobcats off the back, off the ground, trying to jack them out of the ground. So uh, skin friction obviously works pretty dang well.
Fence foam versus dry pack. LL Farms living with livestock. One week is not adequate time for dry set to cure. A year from now, the dry set will be some of the hardest concrete you've ever seen. Plus, it's much easier and faster to work with than wet. I would disagree with that. It is not going to be near as hard as the wet set. The wet set, done properly, will cure much harder, as we proved. And that was in there for three weeks, 21 days, something like that. To argue that dry set will ever be as good as wet set, I think you have just wasted a ton of breath and some letters on the screen. That's Nobody's ever going to believe that, and you can put that in any engineering lab ever, and I don't care how long you let it cure, it will never be as hard. Will it be adequate to hold a post? I contend that you can probably make that case, but don't ever try and tell me it's going to be as hard as wet set. Uh, secrets to digging post holes in rocky ground, old news. Judging by the comment, it's not that old. That are a lot of people haven't heard it, and that's what we're counting on. Uh, we don't necessarily think that we're breaking new ground, but sometimes there's a lot of people that haven't seen some of these tips, so we're just trying to share the information we have, and if you've heard of it before, great, and if you haven't, then even better. I thought every dig job on YouTube was done in Narnia. Watch these guys dig luxurious underground sanctuary with a stick and a hand woven basket. <laughs> Not a comment, but pretty creative. Why did it take so long, says Chester Ewers. Because we're cutting corners, didn't you hear? Cutting corners. Our whole point is, is to skimp, but still have it take twice as long as normal. That's the goal. Kudos to you guys for all the comments. Well, I love the comments. I don't even care if they're mean. Uh, if they're mean, they might even get featured. If they're funny, they'll get featured even faster. So, Fence foam versus dry pack. Tractor, auger, mark hole, insert post, backfill with the earth, and repeat. Why is it so freaking hard? Yeah, tell me about it. Why is it so freaking hard? Oh, there we go. No dig vinyl fence. In time, this will look like crap. It's the way of today. All dressy and shiny to get the check, but no test of time quality. If driving post directly into dirt was structurally sound, then why concrete at gates? Only because it's much more sound using concrete. Uh, it goes on to say, gates screwed in to nothing but vinyl equal fail. Uh, all dressy and shiny today just to collect the check. Not at all just to collect the check. In fact, I don't know if you watched the whole video, we didn't collect the check on this one. This was actually a free fence. Like this person literally got this fence for zero dollars. Did not use concrete at the gates. He used concrete at the gates to set uh, what we call a post sleeve so that that middle post could be pulled out for a double drive gate because we actually want to go above and beyond for our customers. The reason we put that sleeve in there is so that there's two latches and we don't get all that flex so we're actually going above and beyond when most people would just latch the two gates together and skip that middle post all together. <laughs> there's that wind again and this post is just going to come out of the ground. <laughs> That's cool. Again, welcome to the fence world. I've never seen anything like that. It's pretty tough to claim that we're cutting a corner there. Um, luckily, you put transits at the very end of this entire comment because you really lost me there. There is no need for a transit. None. Ever. On a fence line. Ever, ever, ever. Unless you're trying to get miles straight and then I'm going to bring in an engineer and we're going to have him survey the, survey the fence line. So, he did too. He did too. I scrolled a little bit further. He did too. Dan is goofy and annoying. Good on you for leaving two comments though. Good on you. You are really, I don't think, I don't think you know what you're doing here because you're really boosting the algorithm. So I appreciate you. You might, you might make me kind of, you might get me a little uptight, but ultimately you're helping the algorithm. So ship of fools, good looking out. Appreciate you. Those fences are flimsy garbage. Every single one I've ever seen. Every single post needs to be concreted in the ground, needs to be rebar and filled with concrete, especially the corner posts and the gate posts. We're really gonna have to go back to that fence in a year. It's the only way I can prove you guys wrong. You're so terribly wrong. Did another video talking about rebar and that method is very old school. Flimsy garbage. Now the stuff that you're gonna get at your local home improvement store is flimsy garbage. I totally agree, but the fences that we're installing, the reason they cost a little bit more is because they are much better. So if you buy cheap garbage, you're gonna get cheap garbage. But the stuff we're installing, we have to stand behind it and we have to put our name on it and we have to be there to warranty it if something happens. So I guarantee you, the stuff we're installing is not flimsy garbage. We've got thousands of feet of fence out there, probably at this time, probably hundreds, hundreds of thousands of feet of this final fence up and still standing strong after roughly 20 years. 
No dig vinyl fence. Will it withstand 150 mile an hour winds? I live on the Gulf Coast. I don't think this is negative, uh, necessarily a negative comment or a mean comment, but really there is no fence out there that's gonna stand 150 mile an hour winds. If you get 150 mile an hour winds, it's toast. I don't care what you do. Some part of that's gonna fail. No fence is ever designed for that. How we dig no dig, how we build no dig vinyl fence. No chance this would work in Arizona soil. I've been to Arizona. I don't know what you think is special down there. People pound posts every day in Arizona, so I don't know exactly why, why that wouldn't work. Fence brace and wire testing. This is, this is when I ran the car into the fence. William Nesbitt says, I pulled the wood brace the wrong way of the pull of fence, and he is dead wrong. As you tighten up your twitch wire, which is your diagonal wire, as you tighten up the twitch wire, it should move your tie-off post the opposite direction that it should move once you stretch the wire. So as you're, as you're stretch, tightening up your twitch wire, if the brace post is going this way, you would want to tie off to this post, and then when you stretch the wire, it's trying to pull it back that way. That's exactly what I did in that video. So I hate to say it, William Nesbitt, but you are wrong. The twitch wires are run the correct way. Ah, there we go. Fence foam again. What an utterly pointless exercise. Who cares about what you have found? What we want to know is actually useful in the context of building a fence. How well did the post resist being deflected and to a lesser extent pulled out? The other main interests are cost, effort, time of insulation. You might have somewhat of a point. I've got a lot of, qu I'm new at so doing this, these videos and so sometimes I forget people want to know the cost. However, how hard it is to pull them out, we did that in the video, we showed you how, and it actually took a lot of force. We did not test lateral force, and maybe we need to do that. Uh, I think I said it before, but we're always looking for an excuse to go run into some stuff, and ultimately that's what we see is, is usually it's things hitting them. And to me, it seemed pointless to do that because typically the post is gonna bend, especially on a steel post or an aluminum post, it's just gonna bend or break, and you're gonna be in there pulling all that stuff out. But maybe we can figure something scientific out. Unfortunately, we, we did lose this viewer on how to build build no dig vinyl fence. Uh, we'll finish watching when he's back from the donut run, so we did make somebody hungry. I mean, if you're gonna use donuts, you gotta eat donuts. I mean, it goes hand in hand. You make a dangerous video. You work near utility lines. You don't expose and verify. You drive post three feet deep. Glad I don't live where you work. Mike, I feel like you didn't pay attention. We located all the utilities. We're required to give them two feet. We gave them two feet. They had a minimum of two feet between the line and our post at all time. Now, we did dig one hole and we took a lot of heat for digging that one hole and that was because we didn't have the two feet we needed. I don't know how much space you think we need to give these people, but they have very accurate utility locators and if they need that much room to locate their utility. If they have, if they're that unsure about where their utility is, we've got other problems. We didn't expose to verify and we, what in the world are you talking about? What are you talking about? What is the point of a locate if we have to go and expose it after they locate so that we can verify where it is? And in the process of exposing it, didn't we just create more hassle and more potential strikes? Last comment I'm gonna read is kind of true. Michael Brank says, some Karen called within hours of the fence going up complaining about it and in the day and age that we live in, that's probably true. That was just some of the comments we've gotten on these videos and I don't care if you want to leave nasty comments. I may pretend I'm terribly torn up by them, but uh, in the end, you guys are watching the videos, you're commenting and it's all good for us. So. Uh, if you want to come out here and you want to come see us, come check it out. We're actually pretty nice guys, even if you think we're morons. Um, and we'll, we'll be more than hospitable. So thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for all of the comments and the feedback that you provide. We are loving every second of it. Until next time, you have a good dang day.